Honorable Ali Fassal has just stepped in the studio, so we will allow him uh, to uh, uh, say hi to the people. Uh, uh, then we start the interview proper. Good evening, Uncle Alifa. How are you? Good evening. Thank you very much for inviting me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, thank you so much. We start with uh, your tour, recent tour from the United States. Uh, what was this tour all about? Well, I was invited. If I knew that you were going to ask about that, I'll bring you the award given to me by Ohio University. Mm -hmm. uh, they felt that uh, what happened in the Gambia was unique. Mm -hmm. And uh, they followed it in uh, uh, the media and wanted me to deliver a lecture mm -hmm. on the developments that took place in the Gambia which led to the impasse and how it concluded in the peaceful transfer of power. Mm -hmm. So essentially that was my mission. They paid and took responsibility for everything. And uh, I delivered the lecture as well as also gave class lectures uh, to uh, different uh, uh, departments. Mm -hmm because it was a, a combined uh, initiative of the African Studies Department, the History Department, and the Political Science mm -hmm. uh, Department of the University. Mm -hmm. And they also uh, indicated interest in publishing the book. Okay. And uh, so uh, I'm, I'm hoping that they will do the review mm -hmm. of the manuscript mm -hmm. and uh, its indication of interest in the publication of the book by the Ohio University Press. Mm -hmm. And thereafter, uh, I was also invited uh, by uh, Gambians making arrangements. I must say that there is a Gambian, uh, Professor Asan Sar, who is at Ohio University, who had helped many Gambians to be doing their PhD uh, in the university. Mm -hmm. And along with his colleagues, uh, they had followed the impasse and they had inquired from him who I was. And he took the initiative to do the contact and indicated the interest of these three departments in me giving a lecture. Okay. Uh, yes, this is what happened. And then, of course, the University of Washington, some Gambians contacted them that I was going to Ohio University, mm -hmm. and that if they were interested, they could also get me to University of Washington. So I did uh, go to the University of Washington, delivered both class lectures and a, a general lecture, and there, too, uh, the interest was shown in the publication of the book uh, in Dallas and uh, um, uh, the San Francisco. Uh, I did get uh, invitation to speak in town halls, uh, I think in California, uh, to speak in town halls. Uh, co the consequence tour also followed. Uh, why was this important? Well, I have to render account to my constituency, and that uh, must be a frequent thing. In fact, uh, after the local government elections, uh, my programs proper will begin with the constituency because I don't want to give the impression that uh, this is a propaganda tool. I have said that uh, I would want to serve the constituency uh, once before retiring from, and let me emphasize, retiring from uh, uh, National Assembly politics. I'm not saying retiring from politics. Some people may say <laughs> what, it now that what, he has retired. What, what are the differences? Uh, well, the difference is that I will, this is my, the last time I will be standing as a National Assembly member in that constituency. Mm -hmm. And I decided to go to the National Assembly because of the critical situation of a transition. Mm -hmm. And I believe that I have a role to play you know, in the building of that institution. And after that, I believe the lessons would have been clear to, to many Gambians how the National Assembly should function. Mm -hmm. And they are very competent uh, people who would be able to step in in terms of constituency work. The, then, of the people course, there are not competent? Well, no, I'm saying mm -hmm. many people will be able to uh, participate in standing as National Assembly members in, in dealing with the situation. I'm saying I'm, I stood this time in order to go to the National Assembly because of the special circumstances of the country okay. that we are in a situation of transition mm -hmm. and you need a National Assembly that can carry out oversight. 
okay. in, in scrutinizing how the executive carries out its functions. I was a bit lost. I was thinking that you were saying uh, many people at the National Assembly do not know how it works, so you are there to quote them before it stands, then you leave. Well, you know, that's not for me to say. I'm saying my intention is to at least uh, give an example of how a National Assembly uh, works. And if there are people there who know uh, how, then we'll be combining together to make it a very efficient oversight institution, and therefore it will deliver uh, as expected by, by the population. Are you impressed how things are going at the National Assembly? Well, I am convinced that uh, uh, it is a new institution uh, which is growing in independence, and uh, people are listening to issues, and they're beginning to allow their mind to speak the language mm -hmm. of, of facts and then uh, accept what is uh, uh, factual so that we act together in unison because the transition is not about political parties. And Section 112 of the National Assembly emphasizes very clearly that we should put national interest before personal interest before other partisan interests. So mm -hmm. in that sense, uh, that culture is building up. And uh, let's hope that in a year, if the National Assembly can go to this level mm -hmm. Uh, where bills can be brought and then uh, uh, amended right there, mm -hmm. you know, so that uh, uh, they'll be passed, where certain bills are referred to institutions that can do further scrutiny mm -hmm. in order to be able to come back and inform the, the body uh, what is the best thing to do, uh, where uh, uh, international agreements are uh, put aside, mm -hmm until they are properly done well clearly that's the, that's the work of the national assembly okay okay yeah. uh that's fine thank you uh, so much uh also tell us about serekunda school we saw in the papers that you went to serekunda lower basic school after a thief broke into the school and you promised to help them with certain things why do you have to do this well this is a way of helping people to understand uh, the uh, giving back because the National Assembly pays the uh, National Assembly member uh, a privilege uh, uh, wage and uh, or let's call it a salary and allowances so in that sense uh, you know conscience uh, would uh, preach that you give back uh, the little from the little mm -hmm. to the constituency rather than give it in a manner where you are patronizing for people to vote for you again because I don't expect that they will vote for me again anyway because I'll not be standing. Okay. So the essence here is to see what could be done that will be giving back you know, to the people for putting me in the position that I'm in. Mm -hmm. So what we have done in Serekunda School is to replace what was actually stolen and since they did not have a night watch person, we agreed that we will spend $2,000 a month you know, to pay the night watch person mm -hmm. uh, for them to hire the person. And uh, that is done as a, as a token, and we anticipate that whenever uh, the ministry uh, has the capacity to actually provide uh, the, uh, the school with night watch persons, then that could go for another purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, we also, during the constituency tour, uh, did inform people, for example, I think you see that monument yes. outside of, of, of Serakuda School. Yes. You know, uh, 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 there, you know, it was broken to pieces. Somebody, I think it's the Gambia Ports Authority, uh, decided to build a model of a ship, but it was broken, transformed into uh, a real uh, uh, waste dump. And it was very uh, terrible, and I saw. So I saw that, well, we could utilize this, because just after the change, that let's utilize it to teach the people how to respect the monuments, because it beautifies the, the environment. So we decided to get welders and masons to rehabilitate it, yes. and then eventually painted it in the national flag, mm -hmm. and put one Gambia, one nation, one people, we'd welcome to Serakunda. Mm -hmm. The objective here is everybody who enters Serakunda will know that what enabled us to effect the change on the 4th of December 2016 was the spirit of a new Gambia, mm -hmm. one Gambia, one nation, one people. So it is a reminder, and that's 
what monuments are supposed to do. Yeah. They're supposed to remind people of ideas and principles that will enable them to be a better citizenry. Uh, at the same time, we have seen that sometimes you have these monuments and they're not taken care of. Yes. So we decided to get uh, a young man mm -hmm. who was uh, trying to get a wheelbarrow, but will borrow uh, in order to try to earn an income. So we uh, have a contract with the young man that will purchase the wheelbarrow and then you will take care of the monument. And we also uh, address, for example, uh, immediately after the rainy season, we decided to pay about uh, $7,000 to be able to at least clean the graveyard, Serokunda graveyard. Mm -hmm. But they just cut the thick uh, bush that was there. Mm -hmm. So we agreed with the young man that uh, from henceforth, they're going to clean it you know, completely and annually he will be able to receive you know six thousand dollars you know for maintaining the graveyard until uh, we have a new dispensation at the kmc because they are responsible mm -hmm. for all these yes. uh, graveyards yes. so, so mm -hmm. when they take care of it well then that burden is, is is removed so we also gave some examples some examples where uh, we started a project which deals with uh, people in upper basic school who cannot pay their fees. So we've agreed that uh, 23 people in one ward and another 23 people, that is Bartes or London ward, uh, are being identified so that at least we give them $1,000 you know, for their fees, upper basic school fees. Mm -hmm. And that is also to really show that education should be free, uh, but uh, government must have sovereign national wealth to be able to deliver free education. And uh, one of our projects is also uh, dealing with the women, where uh, we have uh, decided that we will select two women first, mm. who will be given ten thousand dollars each, you know, so that they work to produce. And then within a period of five months, we'll have ten women, five each, uh, in ward, and then they will work, and then we will do the savings, you know, at uh, one of the, you know, uh, banks. I don't want to mention the name, mm -hmm. uh, it'll like propaganda purposes for the bank, <laughs> uh, but, but essentially uh, then that will serve as a revolving fund mm -hmm. in order to show people that ultimately government, yes, we usually say government cannot employ everybody, but that's not an excuse also for mm -hmm. government to say you are on your own. Mm -hmm. uh, wherever a government uh, does not absorb people, it also creates projects. For example, projects where you have a uh, cooperative bank which will give people seed money so that they can engage in whether it's poultry project, whether it's uh, tie and dye, whether uh, you, you are going to retail, you know, fruits and vegetables. So people who are engaged in any form of productive venture would need a cooperative bank that will assist them to give them seed money. Mm -hmm. And we believe that this gives an example of the future, how we can really address the problems of low income. PDOIS as a party must be preparing for uh, local government uh, elections. Uh, Councillor Zip, how far? Yes, uh, I think tomorrow is the, the day for PDOIS. All the other parties have actually gone, uh, and uh, tomorrow is PDOIS. And one thing, uh, Keva, is that we've seen the peace and tranquility mm -hmm. in the country. Uh, I don't know whether you've heard of any incidents, but since nomination has been going, uh, I think all parties went and, and got nominated. So far, mm -hmm. I've not heard of any incident. Yes, I got a report yeah. yesterday. Ah. One incident that I'm investigating. Yes, okay. Well, uh, and, and, and I would want to know okay. as, uh, okay. as uh, the person chairing the inter-party committee. Okay. And uh, I believe that uh, we, we should move forward mm -hmm. uh, to see this as transition, mm -hmm. not as a party-owned thing, mm -hmm. but as a country that must emerge mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. from the past uh, in order to be a new uh, entity mm -hmm. and uh, which will guarantee all of us mm -hmm. uh, that freedom to select people that we believe are efficient mm -hmm. in addressing our needs and aspirations. Well, this interview should be going on till uh, 7 o'clock, almost 6 o'clock. Uh, the last question we will ask you is what happened at the National Assembly yesterday? Uh, we saw in the paper, social media, WhatsApp, Facebook, uh, they say you almost fought with the Speaker of the National Assembly. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Well, that would have been terrible then. <laughs> the person who struggled to ensure that we have peaceful transfer of power uh, going to the National Assembly and uh, uh, be a terrorist. Uh, yes, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> they told me you almost, ex you almost exchanged blows. Uh, uh, well, I think what has happened uh, is uh, rather unfortunate, um, but it's people to know the facts uh, because the way it is presented really 
uh, uh, everybody has uh, an opinion and it is understood. But what essentially happened is this. Uh, we had a motion and the motion was presented on a framework of uh, concessional loans uh, uh, a loan that is supposed to be given to the Gambia by the People's Republic of China. Mm -hmm. Now, the framework came before the loan, and the framework was mentioning the loan. Well, here it's like you have a father uh, and your son, and the son uh, is, is seen to be the senior of the father. You know, <laughs> you know that is not logical. Yeah. You know, so essentially the framework came and is mentioning the loan that we have not seen. And then the, the motion was for us to really adopt you know, the motion and ratify that agreement. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it was pointed out that that was flawed because you cannot put the cart before the horse. Okay. You must know what is actually in the loan before you deal with a framework you know, agreement. And everybody in that National Assembly seems to have uh, understood what was being said. Uh, so, you know, the agreement was rejected. And then uh, the proposal was for us to go and deal with the loan. Uh, well, we proceeded. Well, we even voted. And uh, regardless of party affiliation, mm -hmm. uh, people voted that we should put it aside and, and move on. And that is exactly what was done. So uh, then uh, uh, the Speaker... Uh, wanted the minister to to explain Which minister a minister of uh, finance uh, and economic affairs to explain because the minister said that the the, the documents are linked are organically linked and okay. if you reject one you are rejecting the rest what we saw that he uh, the minister of finance was representing the honorable minister of uh, foreign affairs was that right well, uh, essentially, it uh, uh, was supposed to be presented, but we all know that loans uh, are presented by the Ministry uh, for, for oh. Economic Affairs. Oh. But then the document, that agreement, uh, was uh, signed by the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and uh, was expected to be presented by, by him. That's what I was told, mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah. Uh, but essentially what I saw, I don't want to mention things that uh, I have not seen and whatever may have happened. Essentially, it was the Minister for uh, uh, Economic Affairs, Finance and Economic Affairs, who presented the framework agreement. It was set aside, and then he should have presented, come and presented. it will make a motion on the loan. So rather than making a motion on the loan, uh, he was trying to explain the organic link between the framework and the loan and showing that the rejection of one is like literally uh, rejecting everything else and that people and started you know, blasting really the National Assembly members for getting ready to uh, deny the country uh, internet access that which speed on all that. Mm -hmm. So uh, essentially the standing orders uh, are very clear on that, mm -hmm. that uh, once uh, a, a particular question has been decided, mm -hmm. you are not permitted by standing order 36 to, to refer back to it, to go back to it. Mm -hmm. And that's precisely what uh, he was doing, and was doing it in a manner uh, that was not uh, the best of manners from my own opinion. So okay. I uh, raise a, a point of order. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe now, looking at it a second time, I should have gone directly to the point of order 36, mm -hmm. <laughs> paragraph 3, which shows that, you know, uh, that should not be entertained. That should not be entertained. Uh, you know, so, but, uh, you know, you, you end up being diplomatic in mm -hmm. so many instances. These mm -hmm. are ministers, they are not our enemies. Mm -hmm. You don't want to, you know, you, you, you try to create some element mm -hmm. Of, of tolerance and cooperation because it's in the national interest. Mm -hmm. But maybe that was misunderstood mm -hmm. because uh, I was told by the, uh, the speaker that, well, that was not her observation. Uh, but it was in a sparking mood and uh, there was a reaction of, of, of exchanges of uh, what from the speaker, you know, from the speaker to myself. Mm -hmm. and did, 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 did she tell you that you had one disturbing the National Assembly? Should sit down well, I could not even hear what he, she was saying again mm -hmm. because I was talking. She was uh, so, in essence, then I sat down, and then of course uh, there was uh, 
something that I heard that, well, the person should be uh, ordered out, or some other remarks, well, uh, I didn't know where that was coming from. But because, you should be ordered out. Uh, well, I said, I don't know where that was coming from because, you know, the standing orders, if you want to disrupt the National Assembly, you, you, sometimes you see quenching marks in this National Assembly. Yeah. When that happens, you know, the Speaker consult the other members of the National Assembly. Yeah. And usually, there are powers by members of the National Assembly through consultation uh, to talk about, you know, issues of that nature. But uh, the reality was that uh, everything was calm around us. It was just between the Speaker and Halifa <laughs> So, uh, after a other while... Other members were not reacting. Well, that's what I'm saying. The, the reaction was because of this, this, this exchange. Uh, what I mean is that Parliament was not being disrupted. Mm -hmm. uh, it was an exchange. Uh, you don't call that gross disruption. You know, I think you understand what I, I understand, mean. I understand. When you want to mm. prevent the work of Parliament from mm. continuing, mm -hmm. this is when certain things are done by the members, not necessarily by the Speaker. Mm -hmm. you know, the Speaker may say certain remarks, but then the consultation must go with mm -hmm. the members. Mm -hmm. But it was interesting that the members themselves wanted uh, to suspend the proceedings so that the members will sit and discuss, which means that you did not have a problem between members. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a situation that is unfortunate and it should never happen again. Okay. Uh, because it led to a situation where parliament was not moving. Was not moving, okay. And uh, uh, ordering, you know, these were just remarks. I think people put this in their papers, etc. But yes. they were remarks, and remarks can can be made, but they were not remarks that could be acted on, and uh, consequently it paralyzed uh, the National Assembly, and I was ashamed of myself. I looked at it <laughs> and said, well, we want our women to hold, you know, very important positions, yeah. and here was a minister who was there to talk about a loan agreement, and uh, because of simple, you know, uh, language problem, uh, we were imperiling the whole uh, National, National Assembly. Assembly. Mm -hmm. So I just raised my plaque, mm -hmm. and interestingly enough, uh, the speaker recognized uh, my plaque mm -hmm. and then uh, accepted that I should speak. Okay. So, so I think that was reconciliatory mm -hmm. from, from my point of view, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, uh, if you are ordering somebody out and he raises a plaque, and then you recognize that the person is... Uh, I, I think, I think mm -hmm. uh, for me, mm -hmm. uh, that is the message and that drove me. I said, well, okay. We were talking about decorum. Mm -hmm. And uh, Halifa Salah wants to practice what he preaches. So I'm saying uh, the minister should really abide by the spirit of decorum. And you, the uh, 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 speaker, is accurately saying, you are saying that uh, I am not also acting in line with that spirit, mm -hmm. uh, then, of course, for me, I withdraw everything that I've said that is not acting in that spirit and accept my apology if, if you believe that that is the case and that let par Parliament proceed. You, you apologized. Know. Well, uh, more than that, you know, I think I, I, I became very reconciliatory mm -hmm. that we don't want to, we want to respect our women, we want to respect the position mm -hmm. because I have a duty you know, as a national leader you know, to, to be an example. We mm -hmm. don't want to break people. We don't want to destroy people. Mm -hmm. We want to build a nation. And you cannot build a nation without building a people. So we have to rise above, uh, you know, those things. And I think I rose above it. And I felt very good, you know, when I rose above it. And I think... Uh, and next time we'll speak the language of the standing orders. And I think <laughs> so that, you is, were that, not that sent is more powerful. Out, you were not sent out at all. You did not leave the National Assembly building? Well, what, I don't know what sent out means. I, did you leave the National Assembly building? You know what I'm saying? The person was talking, and, and I was sitting, you know, because what was, there was no gross disorderliness in that National Assembly. So, uh, you know, what happened in that National Assembly is really disrupting the, the, the proceedings because of the impasse between mm. uh, one Halifa Salah and one speaker. So, in is, essence... Is this something normal? I'm seeing some people on Facebook saying, well, you go to other countries, National Assembly members, sometimes you think they want to fight. Is, is this something normal in the National Assembly? Well, I think the National Assembly of Gambia is an example. You look at our standing orders, you are not even supposed to clap. Oh, in the National Assembly? Yeah, because mm. I think the rules, of course, will still refine them, created a situation where 
uh, the National Assembly member, according to Section 112, should really maintain the integrity of the National Assembly in an outside National Assembly. Okay. So I believe that if we accept the conduct dictated by the Constitution, then we are supposed to be special people. We are supposed to be people who act according to order, that is the standing orders, whatever we said. In fact, the best thing uh, the speaker should have done is when I rose up in, uh, which standing order are you relying on mm -hmm. uh, to, 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 to raise a point of order? Uh, that, that, that is, I think you've seen it even in the National Assembly. One of the National Assembly members who they wanted to stop said, well, on what grounds should somebody uh, raise a point of order? And eventually we had to look at uh, this, uh, the standing orders and look at standing order 36 and say, uh, well, this is there. We must always speak on the subject, not outside of the subject that mm -hmm. is before. Mm -hmm. So essentially you have these rules mm -hmm. uh, that helps you to maintain order mm -hmm. so that we serve the nation because we are there to serve the nation. Okay. We are not there to show this party or that party uh, and uh, this personality or that personality. Egos appear there. That's, that's not the purpose of the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. uh, I think if, if, if we all come to that, then all of us should resign you know, from, from our position. Yeah, it, it, did you regret? Like, did you say, I wish this never happened? Well, obviously, because I, the intention originally was to hold the minister to order so that he focuses on the issue and f uh, stop mentioning things that the standing order said should not be mentioned. A question has already been decided. You don't come back to the National Assembly and dwell on that again. That's, that's, that's out of order, completely out of order. Okay. And my regret is that I did not point out the standing order mm -hmm. and, and just stop there and said the minister should stop that. And obviously he would have stopped it because that's what, not because Halifa Saleh says it, because that's what the standing order that's says. Right. Yeah. And, no. and, and the lesson I've learned is that I will start uh, using the standing order as my power. <laughs> uh, not rather, rather than, uh, not only in the Gambia, let's say yeah. worldwide, uh, mm -hmm. do the speaker of any national assembly has the right to send out a uh, a national assembly member well if a national assembly member is so disorderly that it is disrupting the proceedings and the speaker is calm and is warning the national assembly member mm -hmm. one times two times three times and the national assembly does not care and the members are now feeling agitated that who is this person what is this person trying to do we will not allow the person to hold us into ransom well the speaker can ask the national assembly to 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 to, to move out of the chambers and if the person refuses then the speaker puts it to the national assembly members you know to to look at discourse and emotion will be raised by a national assembly member that this person uh, should be sent out of the national and then it becomes a procedure it's a whole procedural issue okay uh, you can't just jump and send someone no, out no, 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 no.